Hey horror fans, welcome back to another episode of Room 237 Presents Reslash, the show where I take a classic horror film, its modern day remake, compare them, see which one was better, and if a remake even had to be, if it even deserved to be made. And my last two videos were on The Hills Have Eyes. So now I'm going to comp actually compare them. Even though in both reviews I kind of made a lot of comparisons. But, yeah. So, 1977 versus 2006. Whoops. So, first, um, the cast. Well, as far as people I actually know, which would be uh, Michael Behrman and D. Wallace. D. Wallace is one of my favorite, I guess she counts as a scream queen, or favorite, you know, horror movie actresses of like the 70s and 80s but you know I mostly they did a good job the cast in this you know I like the uh, the the parents the big Bob and his wife in this one especially big Bob the mom kind of had some weird moments the and of course, the the mutants were kind of hokey in this. Like a lot of just like, I'll get you later, girly. Which is actually a line. Which I would probably have to say the mutant that gave the best performance, other than Michael Barrowman as Pluto, might have been. Uh, what's her name in this? Jan Janice Blythe. Who I believe is the one that played Ruby. Which Ruby was one I forgot to mention in this. The cast in this, I think pretty much everybody did a decent job. You know, of course, I really like Ted Levine and just about anything he's in. Kathleen Quinlan did a good job. They played Big Bob and the mom. Aaron Stanford, I think, did a great job as Doug. He had a great arc. <clears throat> Doug in this one, he pretty much just looked like a porn star. I mean, everyone in this sort of had scenes where they're good, and then some where it's sort of either over the top or whatever. This one, I think everybody did a pretty decent job. Um, especially the mutants. I mean... Uh, a Michael Bailey Smith as Pluto, who has no lines. He pretty much just has to act with his his face and his body language. You know, act. Even, there's even some um, in the features you see like the test with the makeup where he acts sad and then he gets angry. Robert Joy as Lizard. You know, he's definitely <clears throat> the scariest. Mu well. Pluto's scary as far as he's imposing. Lizard is just very vicious. Overall, I would say this cast did better. The effects, wow. I know with this one, sort of the appeal was they were going to hire people with actual uh, defects. Um to play the mutants really uh, Michael Barrowman was the only one that was of noticeable other than that they just used like little bits of makeup to you know mess up someone's face or false teeth wasn't that extensive and other than that you know it had the really bright bright red blood that a lot of 70s films had the only real good gore effect would have been when Pluto gets his Achilles tendon torn by the dog. This movie is all effects. As I've said in my review for this, it's I consider this like John Carpenter's The Thing or David Cronenberg's The Fly of the 2000s. Because the gore looks great. Um... Another thing I forgot to mention, which I cannot believe I did, 
I can't believe I forgot to mention in my review for this. This movie has CGI also. But it's used as an enhancement. CGI as an enhancement. Not the whole fucking effect, which makes it look like shit. Like, for example, when Big Bob is on fire uh, on the tree, the CGI is used like to turn his eyes white, which was a nice effect. Or like to make his skin a, a bubble. Or to add some extra flames. Like for the up close shots. Like when, when Big Bob was burnt in this one. They pretty much just put black on his face. He looks like a charred fucking corpse in this. And the scene is much longer. Like you actually see parts of his body burning. Even the CGI helped. But the practical effects, each mutant is unique and different, but they all look great. You know, Pluto is sort of like the, the big head with like the Quasimodo eye. And Lizard has like that, which is a little simple. Uh, you know, Big Brain, who has like the xenomorph head and like the, the sort of bunched up scarfy jowly neck goggle who has no nose just like a couple slits you know each mutant looks great ruby has sort of like you know kind of the which here's another thing of how good the cgi even that is ruby you know use CGI to like make her head lopsided or the two mutant children you know the uh, like the little girl that says uh, mister will you play with us they just CGI her head all fucked up but like the gore effects like when Doug kills cyst you know it like he sticks an axe in his back and you hear like the bones crunching and the blood's coming out. Looks great. So and yeah, so the effects definitely go to this one. Hell, even um uh Papa Jupiter when he's r ripping Kathleen Quinlan's chest open and eating her heart. That also looked really good. So effects definitely go to this. Atmosphere. Um, that's going to be closer to a tie. They both utilize the um, the atmosphere pretty well. Of course, they're they're different terrains. Like this is more like jagged hills and rocks, and this one's more of actual hills and more of like a desert. But. This one, I would say, st did it better, but not by, like, a landslide, like, the effects. There's a lot more shots, like, with the binoculars. A lot more, like, establishing shots. Um, there, This is more of a sense of isolation. Even like when Doug gets to the uh, test village, you know, like really feels like the middle of nowhere. In fact, there's a scene that's not even in this one where Doug, you know, who's looking for help before all the mutant stuff happens. And he finds just like a bunch of stuff that he takes back with him. In this, we actually see it's a big crater from, you know, a test bomb. There's all these cars that, assuming that's where the mutants get rid of their victims' cars, and he finds just a bunch of supplies. When he gets back to the trailer, he says it's like the Twilight Zone. Yeah, that and the test village does kind of feel otherworldly. It, it, it builds a sense of dread. That's one thing that, you know, atmosphere can do is create a sense of dread, especially in a horror film. And I think this one did it a lot more. 
like scenes where it shows one of the sisters looking out the windows of the trailer. She sees like like a a, a shine, like a a reflective thing way off in the the hills. You know someone's out there watching them. I think that feels more evident in this one. But this one did utilize its environment when it had to. It, it fairly decently. So, it, I would still say this one, but not as big a difference as, like, the effects. The scares. Okay. I would say this one definitely is scarier. For example... Um, the scene where Big Bob gets back to the gas station to, to look for help and the attendant either gets killed or commits suicide. There's that part where either one or a couple of the mutants are talking to Big Bob from the darkness or from the bushes, taunting him. It is kind of creepy in this one, where it's like, hey, I'm over here. So he, like, shoots. And kind of can't really hear other things that they're saying. In this one, they're just going, like, daddy. So he shoots, and they, he's like, they'll say it fast, or they'll say it slow. And, you know, the music also is like, dun, dun, dun. Daddy. Done. 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 Well orchestrated. Um, you know, obviously, the whole trailer attack was way more intense in this one. Um, I'm trying to think of just like other actual scares. I guess, well, one really creepy moment for the first time I saw it, I still think it's creepy, when Bobby finds out that one of the dogs, Beauty, has been killed, and he falls and uh, knocks himself out, there's one mutant sitting above him, uh, like Ruby comes in, and there's this mutant above him, the goggle, the one with no nose. And he's eating the dog's leg. He sees Bobby and he like points. And then he just lets out this like. Ah! Like this really fast laugh. And then he just like goes back to eating. Just. I always thought that was creepy. Like he laughs really fast. And then he like quickly just goes back to eating. Um. The scene where Doug gets knocked out by the bald lady. And he wakes up in essentially a freezer. But I mean it's not plugged in. And it's full of bloody body parts. You can almost smell it. You know. First time I saw it I thought he got buried. I thought he was buried in something. Until it actually showed the freezer. So yeah, the scares is definitely creepier in this one. Scarier, more intense. This one, I mean, other than... Uh, I Other than, like, the taunting Big Bob and some of the trailer stuff. It, not a whole lot of creepy or scary moments. Yeah. Also... One thing that I always thought was creepy was when Bob, Bobby finds that Kathleen Quinlan's body's been taken out of the truck and dragged away. And he comes around this corner and he sees Papa Jupiter, you know, some feet away. And I, I like the way it's shot, too, because it's shot, like, over Bobby's shoulder. So Papa Jupiter's, like, in the distance. He's eating her heart and it's like he sees... And so that's when Bobby has to run. You see Papa Jupiter going after him. I thought that was creepy. Just like the way... Just like the way he's off in the distance. And 
it's like he's he's interrupted and he sees I thought that was a good scary moment so scares I'll have to give to this as well um killer or killers okay obviously this one not just because they look better but you know Pluto especially during like the it's breakfast time scene and he's just going after Doug with that axe in the house tearing up the house lizard who's just vicious and I mean in this one, they, I mean, a Michael Behrman is the only one that really looks like a mutant. And I kind of worded that wrong because that is how he actually looks. But, you know, they don't really look that scary. They don't really, it's mostly like just talking, like, like I'll come back for you, like, they don't really do anything that's really other than like the rape and some of the kills. They don't really have like a presence or like a sense of dread that this one does. They're just way more intense than this one. Like the part, there's a part where when Big Bob gets attacked and he's on like this wagon on going through the mines and it's kind of his vision and he's all blurry because he's been hit in the head and you can kind of see some of the mutants kind of pulling the wagon that he's in sort of creates dread or like when you hear some of the mutants talking over the the walkie talkies you know just they're I'd much rather encounter them in this than in this. So yeah, I would say that they look scarier. They're more imposing and deadlier in this one. So I like the attempt that they tried to hire like uh, deformed people. Even though Michael Barrowman, I think, was the only one. It was a nice touch. But... And they're all named after planets in this one. With this one, they're named sort of after, you know, like Goggle. He, he's the one that watches with the binoculars through the hills. Um, yeah, so Killers, I would definitely say they're scarier and more intense and more enjoyable to watch in this one. The score, I actually don't remember any music from this one except for maybe the credits. I don't even remember what that sounds like. The score to this is one of those scores that helps everything. The main theme, like that, duh, duh, is put over a couple scenes, like what is the rape scene? Or if it's like, that one where they hear the walkie-talkie outside and, you know, it's all completely dark and they're looking through the bullet holes because they think they're still out there. And there's that ding, dong, ding. Ding, dong, ding. Or at the end where, you know, like that part where Doug sees his, his wedding ring and he realizes he's going to fucking kill this guy. And he's just... The music is like this... Blah, 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 duh. It just keeps building up. Oh, he's beating the fuck out of that mutant with the shotgun and then shooting him. Every scene that has the music or even like... Big Bob being taunted from the darkness. The daddy. It goes, done, done, done. You know, every scene the music is in, the music helps enhance the scene. It's not distracting. It sounds great. It's either catchy or sounds cool. And it helps the scene, makes it scarier, more intense, whatever. Score definitely goes to this one. 
And so which one was better? I'm actually a bigger fan of this than I am this. Not to say this is a bad movie. I mean, I, I like it all right. This, I think, is a great movie. I really enjoy it. it. I do think it's better than the original. And did it deserve to be made? I think this will be the first time you ever hear me say yes. I, Because, I mean, this is like a B movie. Yeah, it's become a classic over time, but it's still sort of a B movie. And, um, you know, this, even though it has a lot of things the same, even dialogue in some of the shots, or how some of the scenes are executed, it improves on them. It's, you know, a newer, maybe bigger budget version of it. And the whole third act just opened the movie right up. It it opened it right up. I mean, with this had the anticlimactic sudden ending, this just opened like it gave Doug a much bigger arc. It was a more satisfying ending. And just as a movie, it it's just a much better movie. And I always thought remakes should be less popular. Which, yeah, that is a cult classic, but less popular or bad movies. So they can have a chance to do it better. Even though this is a decent film, it is a cult classic by Wes Craven. This took it and it made it better. It did a better version of it. So yeah, I think this totally deserved to be remade. And I, I, I gotta give it to this one. Versus, I think for the first time, goes to the remake. Not sure how often that will happen, but it did then. Anyway, I, I hope you liked this episode of Reslash a little bit longer. It's different. The remake actually won. And, yeah, I'm getting stuffy again, but... So, yeah, there is... The Hills Have Eyes. So, thank you for watching.